There's a new study from the Mayo Clinic released just this morning that shows how artificial intelligence can determine a person's actual physiological age, which could be years off from a person's chronological age. Joining us to talk about what this means and why doctors might treat you differently because of it is Dr. Paul Friedman. He is joining us this morning. He's the chair of the Department of Cardiovascular Medicine at the Mayo Clinic. And, Doctor, thanks for being here today. Good morning. Thank you for having me, Becky. All right, when you say physiological age versus chronological, I, I start thinking of, you know, age is just a number and we're all as young as we think. Is that what it is or is it something different? Well, sort of. The study started, was really spearheaded by my colleague, Zakia Tien Suresh Kapp, and asked a simple but profound question. Can we use an ECG to see how old somebody is? Mm -hmm. And so we fed a number of ECGs into a computer, a neural network, and essentially the computer guesses at first. You put in an ECG and say, how old is this person? It may guess 35, you say no 50. And doing that over hundreds of thousands of times, it starts to learn to read subtle patterns that our bodies are giving off. And then following that, they did a test to say, all right, now let's see if someone whose age we don't tell the computer, if it can then identify their age. And it turns out it was a very powerful test. We measure these with something called an AUC, a perfect test is a 1, flipping a coin is a 0.5, an exercise treadmill test is 0.85, this test was a 0.94, <laughs> very good for predicting age. What's the use of that? What do you do with that in Great medicine? question. <laughs> That's what we thought. So it turns out there are a couple of uses. The first one is this. It turns out that if, let's say, you're 50 and the computer says you're 65, odds are high that you have a medical illness. It means your physiologic age, disease, frailty, other conditions are higher than the number of years you've lived. Mm -hmm. And that's important because it turns out that if you are in that category and you get treatment, we saw a number of people where their age got younger again. Huh. In fact, we have a pretty dramatic graphic of one of those types of cases. I mean, their ECG changed where they were manifesting that um, they, they were younger. What, what, what difference is this? ECGs don't seem that interesting. What, what is it? That, where is it? The, the, how do they differ? In, it's amazing, actually. And because neural networks are black boxes, we don't really know don't what know they what. see. They're just given a lot of information. They make yeah. these very subtle correlations that if we were able to remember the patterns from millions or hundreds of thousands of ECGs, we could pick up these fine details hmm. that we just can't see. I thought it was just a sign. But a sign it kind of looks like that, but, but um, clearly our bodies are giving off signals that reflect our underlying physiology. Let's take so, a look at the chart that you were just mentioning. This is a chart, uh, if, if we have it in the control room, that shows uh, a person's age, I think, over time. So, right, so on the horizontal axis, what we see is that when the person is... 30 or so, their age looks to be by the ECG 50. Mm -hmm. And it keeps getting older until they're about 54. And at that point, they're like 70 by their ECG age. Mm -hmm. And then something dramatic happens. They get much younger. And you can see they continue to get younger even as in time they're getting older. So what happened in the circle? What was so the this? Thing that's that exactly it. This was somebody who had a heart transplant, wow. literally got the heart of a 16-year-old, got progressively younger, and then lost weight. Blood pressure and diabetes go away and then they get progressively younger. So the main reason we're doing this sort of thing is trying to make healthcare more widely accessible by identifying people who need care. So if you and, saw it on an ECG that you look a decade or two decades older, you could very quickly get them in and try and figure out, put a that's plan of attack, exactly. what's wrong here? What happened to this person? That's exactly right. And ECGs are now so widely available from a watch, from a smartphone, that people can be tested, even if you're in a rural community. And if there's a discrepancy, then maybe you should be seen by a bigger center, be seen by a doctor. If you say you don't know precisely what the computer is picking up in terms of determining age, what's the, the first steps in terms of investigating if somebody seems a lot older than they are? No, that's a, a great question. So first we'd go back to traditional medicine and do a general history and physical, check blood pressure, check blood sugar, check weight, those kinds of things to see if there's something specific that we can find. You know, Apple has talked a lot about this, um, and Tim Cook has talked a lot about how this is the future for Apple. Have you worked directly with any companies that are doing things like this? Because you mentioned watches. Yeah. So increasingly, we're in the process of talking to a number of potential partners, because our goal is to identify these tools, to build these tools, and then we have to work with partners to make them widely available. Mm. Did you ever see somebody who looked like they were decades younger than they actually I, were? I was going to say, you got to get... Figure out what they're doing right. you got to get Shatner... And you got to yeah. take him to the Mayo <laughs> Clinic and like start doing. T he will do it because he, you know, he was out in space. I mean, he would probably <laughs> donate his time <laughs> to see how he became. He's 88, and yeah. he's like in the Amazing Race or something, yeah. running around Europe. I mean, can't you go study him? Would love to. 
Um, broadly speaking, though, I think the, the, uh, the second potential use of this is there are lots of treatments that are being developed, studied, to see if we can prevent aging, as you know. Some yeah. of my colleagues at Mayo are actively working on this. How do we know if they work? Right. So we need some way to assess your age. Right. And so if we further validate this and say the ECG is a marker of your age and we come up with a new pill therapy regimen that makes that get smaller, makes that age get smaller, then maybe we're on to the right track. A perfect microcosm right. of nature versus nurture, though, because I would, I would argue a lot of it's genetic, but then a lot of it is how you treat yourself and your body as well. But good genes go a long way, do they? They not? do. I, I think both play a role. There are certain, certain things we're handed and certain things we can control.